So this will be a little bit different. I'm trying to do this GoPro version of uh, dashing cars. That way you can see me work with my hands a little bit better and actually see what I'm doing since today is going to be a little bit different of a video. It doesn't really have to pertain much to supercharging as much as it does have to do as cleaning up. I've been trying to hit this with some degreaser, clean it up a little bit. You know, I don't want it to be spotless, but I do want to knock some of this crap off when I seal it all up. So I did a wrinkle paint to this a while back and I reused the old valve cover gasket and it leaked a little bit. It's not too bad. I'm not sure how much you can see on the GoPro. I'm going to look back on the footage, but anyway, what did leak a lot is this cams cap. And I did, you can see I went to town with it with a little bit of Honda bond that really didn't work out all that great. And it still leaked on this entire side of the motor and transmission. So I, uh, I'm going to reseal this. I actually need to see if I can't find a better cam cap that'll seal that. I've got a new valve cover gasket on the way. I've got a new oil pan gasket on the way because that oil pan leaked a little bit. Uh, transmission, I scrubbed it up pretty good. You can see it actually looks pretty good. The casing looks a lot better. It's uh, not as bad. Uh, I've got to redo the transfer case. I sealed it a lot with Honda Bond. And you can see in here the main shaft or the main uh, oil seal leaked tremendously on this thing. So whenever I'd fill it up with transmission fluid or uh, MTF or whatever, it would just pour out and out of the car. <laughs> like it would just pour out of here and it'd get all over the flywheel and clutch and all that stuff. And that was not a good deal. So I'm going to, I ordered a new seal for that new uh, bearings for the LSD that are coming in. I've got a whole bunch of things on the way to rebuild this transmission as far as seals wise and putting the LSD in, but there's no real timetable for when that's going to come in. Cause with all this virus stuff on, no one really knows what's going on. I ordered it on the 13th of May. Uh, it still says it's it's verified, but it doesn't say shipped or on the process of ship. The Honda Parts Now website is kind of kind of vague with when it's going to send stuff, so I don't really know when that's going to come in. But uh, it's ready. It's it's prepped up. It's ready to go. I am going to degrease a little bit more of the inside here so we don't get so nasty when we're putting the LSD in. But. For now, I think this is all right. Like I said, I gave it a good scrubbing and I went to town just to make sure and get all that exterior crap off that was on it from the oil leaks. Over here, you can see that I pulled the clutch out. The clutch is looking pretty good. Plenty of good life on it still left. It, uh, I never had any problem with the clutch slipping and the pressure plate looks good too. So I don't think I'm kind of debating on this if I want to go ahead and upgrade the clutch while I have it all apart anyway. I could go back to another OEM style, but I think I may ask Justin and a few other people who know more about clutches if that's going to be something that's going to be good for me for off-road. If you have any suggestions, leave it in the comments below. But the OEM style has been working just fine off-road. I never had any problem with clutch slips. So it's one of those deals where if it's not broke, don't fix it. So I don't think that I'm going to take care of it right now and it's just more expensive I have to put into it. As far as the motor goes, there are some things I need to clean up. Uh, a lot of things I've been meaning to do, I need to delete this little pipe here and uh, reroute this around, loop it. I've got a new map sensor. This map sensor actually doesn't fit. I have to, I kind of jerry-rigged it so it would work. Uh, the port is bigger than the actual map sensor, so it's kind of wobble around in there. So I actually have it sealed up with some, uh, with I think a rubber hose is what I ended up using to kind of seal that. So that's probably actually not very accurate and probably was hurting my tune a little bit. Uh, this side of the motor, so forever it was running a four rib on the balancer and only a three rib on the alternator. And what I would do is I'd put a four rib belt on it and it would chew it up to it turned into a three rib belt. And it, it worked, it was all right. But I wanna go ahead and make sure that it's taken care of why it's all apart. And there's little things I wanna take care of like that. So that's definitely on the list. I need to cover this up so it's an arc on anything. Uh, there is some black box stuff that I wanna do. I don't know if you can see it very well on the GoPro. I'm not really sure the angle you're seeing here, but there's a black box PCV box on the back that I need to uh, address. I was having some issues at the off-road park where it was actually squirting oil back in here. Actually, now that I see that, that actually goes up here and I may actually be able to do something a little bit different. So I will address that. Um, Oh, uh, little dinky things here and there, just some cleanup stuff. This wire is super tight, so I may reroute that. Uh, I'm gonna check the timing belt, just cursor a glance while I have it all apart, make sure it's all good to go. That way, if I need to change that out, I can go ahead and do that while it's all apart. 
Oh, do, 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 do. So right now I have everything soaking. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill up my water tank with a little bit of pressurized water, hit it, kind of knock some of this grease off, and uh, you'll be able to see a little bit uh, how much it changes with the degreased. While I'm getting started on this, I haven't talked about this on the channel yet, but this is gonna be the new skid plate for the wagon. It actually comes to me from the skid plate guy who actually sponsors the Fiesta. He wants to do the wagon as well, and this is off a Japanese something. I forget what the actual Honda brand of it is. But looking at the underneath of that uh, particular car, it was an early 90s and had a very similar outline to the way the suspension and the front subframe and all that stuff was on the wagon. So I think this is going to work just fine. And when I test fit it up, everything was fine. I think i got to build some brackets for the back, but it's a really simple bracket I could build. And then these will be available for the Civic Wagons. So stay tuned for that. That'll be a future video whenever I get everything put back together. All right, let's hit this a little bit of water. Oof. So I know it doesn't really matter to knock a whole lot of dirt and mud off because again, it's just gonna get right back to it. But while I'm here, I'm able to knock some of the bottom layers of crap off. That way it doesn't, it's not so hard to clean up next time. Uh, so my thought is when I get the skid plate installed, I'll be able to run some rubber protector to keep the engine bay from getting so much mud and crap and grime in it. Cause I've spent a lot of time cleaning up the engine bay and I'm gonna do some touch up paint and I've gotta do little things here and there to get that all sorted out but it's looking pretty good. And I'll go over that here shortly in this video as well. No, it's not a tremendously exciting video, but it's a video to be made because it's just part of documenting of what I'm trying to do with this wagon and the care that goes into every little bit of it. And if you guys like content like this, of course, I'm gonna get it out to you. And I am super excited about the, uh, the feedback I've gotten from the Element videos. I see you guys really have been liking those. So I will plan on doing some more modifications to the element here in the future and in fact skid plate guy speaking of him he actually sent me some stuff for the element he said so I have some mysterious packages on the way for the element so we'll see what that is and I'll make sure to do a video on that when it comes in I'm not gonna sit here and scrub every bit of grime and dirt off but I do like I said want to knock some of these top layers of it off and I figure videos like this get you see, get you a little closer to seeing exactly what all is inside of the wagon because I get a lot of a lot of outside stuff, a lot of action shots, but you don't really get to see like the inner workings of the wagon and what I've all done. So if you guys have questions about the wagon or have anything about the setup or what I've done, please let me know in this kind of video so I can kind of address those in a future video or make a video on that topic. Uh, one video that I am going to make in the future, I hope you guys can see that. But there's a crack in the subframe here and I've already taken some of the paint off to kind of look at it and address it, but I'm going to make a video on how to repair that crack and uh, I'll weld it up and get it all taken care of. It's pretty common for EFs to get that crack there. So I want to make sure that I, I get a video out helping out people who might have that same issue. And I wouldn't have found that if I hadn't taken the motor out, which is really, really fortunate I found that. Again, I hope this angle turns out well. I really can't tell with this old school GoPro. Uh, the new action cameras have screens on the back of them. It makes it a lot easier for you to tell what your shots are going to look like. So eventually I'd like to upgrade to that, but you know, this will work for now. Uh, so one other topic I want to bring up while I'm here is the valve cover. It was looking really good for a long time. I did a kind of a quick job with doing the wrinkle coat, I guess a year ago or a year and a half ago. I'm going to take the valve cover off and actually have it powder coated this time. and have a special color that I have in mind. I really hadn't talked about it much, but you guys will see in the future. I don't want to reveal it. I don't want to talk about it because I don't want people to be like, oh, well, that's gross. Why would you do that color? Blah, blah, blah. It's my wagon. I like that color in particular on these kind of cars. You'll just see in the future. I had some suggestions for some Carol Baskin tiger print maybe. Like, I really think the Wagon King would make it John Exotic. I think that's a great idea. We'll see. I think, uh, I think you guys will be happy with the way it comes out. If you're really, really OG with the channel, you remember this shopping cart. That's, I swear I made this shopping cart I, all out of scrap metal, totally. And then I lifted it. So it definitely didn't come from a Walmart or anywhere like that. Made it all out of pieces I had laying in the yard. And then I, of course, added the giant casters on there to give the lift. So it's my lifted uh, shopping cart for hauling parts. And uh, the wife likes to make fun of me. You never use that thing. Well, look at this. It hauls all my parts around. I can use it 
around the shop. It's a mobile storage bin. Look, look at this. And it's lifted. So there's that. It's got most of my racing parts of the Fiesta. It's got the old Fiesta radiator. I usually try to keep my racing supplies in here. That way I can just roll it out to the Fiesta and load it up when it's ready to go. But uh, yeah, suck on that wife. I know I was just talking about doing that in a future video, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and weld up the subframe while I'm here. I don't have a whole lot more I can do right now until I get some parts in, and uh, I don't feel like a, con a video full of uh, me just cleaning the engine bay is a whole lot of excitement. So, again, trim all this bad boy up. <sighs> So my thought process here is go ahead and get my big ratchet strap and put it on each side of here, here, to here, pull that in a little bit. That way it'll close that gap of hair. Because what happens is when that cracks is it actually lets that tire go out a little bit more. If you saw my video of when Brett Hunter and the rally car and the rally zombie CRX, he had the same issue where his was where he kept having this wheel uh, tow out and camber out and go kind of all kinds of crazy is because I had a crack in the subframe. So he had to do the same repair at Rally Colorado. So again, it's a common EF problem and I'm gonna go ahead and take care of it now. You see here, I uh, just ran a couple beads through here. I stopped about halfway through just to check my line. Finished up here, did a little tack down the bottom just for uh, security reasons. Uh, one thing I forgot to do before I did this is go ahead and drill a hole at the top of the crack just so it wouldn't propagate anymore. But uh, I think with this crease up here, I think it should be okay. Uh, I'll have to keep an eye on it. I kind of screwed up there. I went ahead and ran a bead across here too. I didn't clean it up very well. That's why it's so spattery and it looks kind of ugly. But I. Uh, just a little bit of security there on that bracket. I would like to go ahead and stitch weld this entire subframe up and I may do that in a future video. Just let me know if uh, that's something you guys would be interested in watching. Uh, why I'm here, you see this, this doesn't uh, put a lot of confidence. I mean, it's pretty crappy little spot welds there. And you can see a little bit of rust there. It's probably from the battery because the battery is to stay here. So there's a little bit of surface rust here, a little bit of rust here. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and hit that with the Dremel and I want to go ahead and put a stitch weld underneath both these, just a little bit of extra security. I kind of want to put one on top as well, just to uh, reinforce that, because it's kind of flimsy there, and uh, I'd feel a, bit, a lot better if that had a little bit of weld to it. And you know, while I'm all set up here. I'll go ahead and tack weld there and there, just while I have it all cleaned up. That way, I feel a little bit better about that little mount. So I'm gonna clean that up, a little bit of paint on there, that way it didn't rust. That looks pretty good, not you know the best welder yet, but I'm working on it. This one actually turned out pretty well. A little bit, get a little bit of weld there and tacks on top. Like I said, it probably didn't need it, but I just it didn't inspire a lot of confidence the way it was. It didn't feel as flimsy at least anymore. This side I may end up doing the same eventually, but it doesn't look too bad. And the way that one mounts, I'm not too worried about that one anyway. Alright, let me uh grab a brush, clean that up, and uh, let it cool off a little bit. I'll put some paint on there. The weld actually turned out pretty good. Sorry for the fan noise, but it got hot in here. 
one more wipe down with some acetone. A little bit of rust proofing on the old. Cut the fan off. Just a little bit of rust prevention there. Uh, there is some more areas like right here where the power steering and brake fluid has leaked a little bit and it's taking some of that paint off. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and prep that stuff up too and uh, go ahead and hit it with a little bit of paint. While I'm here, I'm just improvise, make my own scotch braid. Now I know in order to properly get all that done, I really should uh, take the subframe off and do it all proper like, but it's really not in bad condition. It's just why I'm here. I just wanna knock off some of the surface rust and touch up some of the areas that have missing paint. If it is rotted or falling apart, then I would definitely go ahead and just either get a new subframe or replace everything, but it's actually in really good shape. Just had a few spots of bare metal that I wanna get cleaned up and throw a coat of paint on top of. You can see right there from the reservoir. At one point, it looks like it used to leak pretty bad. You can see there's some paint's missing on that as well. And uh, brake fluid will chew up some paint, so that's that's what's happened there. No big deal. Like I said, all the metal is in really good condition. It had it just just knocked the paint off and started doing a little bit of flash rust, surface rust stuff. That grease on top of it has actually probably been working as a rust preventative for a long time. And if you're worried about the kind of some of the overspray that I did. Don't worry about it too much because eventually I want to go ahead and get some real red touch-up paint and do the engine bay. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and take care of what needs to be taken care of. I actually thought about getting some wrap and doing my pattern that I have on my fenders inside here on these walls here. Just a little random spot, just a little attention to detail thing. Let me know what you guys think. I think that'd be kind of rad. You wouldn't really see it unless we're really dug in there deep looking at something. You'd be like, oh yeah, there it is, but I don't know. It may look stupid. There. Okay, a little bit of touch up everywhere. Just why I was go ahead and doing it. I don't want to have some really nice looking areas and then not some not so nice looking areas. You won't really see the subframe, but it is a lot easier to access with everything out of the way, so might as well while I'm here. <clears throat> and voila, that looks a lot better already. The welds look good. I'm not going to worry about too much about that. I am going to keep an eye on it though, just make sure in the future that if I have any problems with caster, camber, toe, whatever on that side to address it when I do immediately look at the subframe because I know that mine has been cracked. Now further down the road, what I'd love to do is uh, eventually get really good with a tube bender and my TIG welding and actually build a rear subframe that's made out of tubes for their wagon. That way I can make it a little stronger, make it a little better looking. And uh, that'd be really something cool to mass produce to help people out with lifted wagons or lifted, or just crack subframe civics. I mean, that's just kind of a common issue like I addressed before earlier in the video. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, just needed to do some stuff in the garage. Kind of wanted to get a video out anyway since I've been on a little bit better uh, upload schedule. If you saw the big news with the CRX, you saw that uh, it's sponsored now by S1 Built. So that's gonna be a humongous build. The Freer CRX all-wheel drive K-series project is a go and it's actually gonna to start tomorrow with some more videos as we go to dad's shop and help him install his new lift. So be watching out for that video next week. Uh, as far as this weekend's content, enjoy your weekend. Have a safe Memorial Day weekend. Enjoy it with family, especially as you can with all the crisis going on. Anyway, besides that, I think I'm gonna wrap it up, guys. I'm gonna get this video out. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments, feel free to drop them below. If you're uh, not subscribed already, go ahead and click subscribe for me because that will help me out with these builds and getting these things going a little better. A lot of big things coming for the wagon. Just uh, while I'm here waiting on parts, I want to address some things. So this is kind of part of the series. Before I go, you can kind of look at the engine. It's looking a lot better. Kind of let it dry, let some of that stuff come off of it. It's not the best, it's not a show quality, but I will work on that after I get the valve cover redone and get all this stuff sealed up because uh, there's no real reason to go ahead and do that without having the oil leaks taken care of first. 
And uh, along with that, I went ahead, I'll get the supercharger mounted back up here so I can start testing different belts and possible tensioners. So that will be, uh, that'll be to come. Thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you guys soon. Stay tuned because we are fixing to go wild. Peace guys.